Hello everyone, and welcome to another class of Masterin. My name is Rodrigo Garcia. In this video, you will learn how to create this triple drop-down menu for interactive and non-editable presentations for the end user. Subscribe, like, and share. Let's begin. To get started, add an icon, image, or graphic to your project. We will use this as the starter to display the first drop-down menu. Insert a new rectangular shape 7.5 inches tall, covering the height of the work area. The width is determined by you. Give it the desired format, adding color, shadows, beveling, etc. This depends on your creativity. I will use the color red to contrast the elements that I will add to this exercise. Place it outside of the work area, touching the left border. Duplicate the shape and give it a height of half an inch. You will use this new shape to create the buttons for each menu. Format it as desired. I will use black for the fill and white text to contrast the elements I will add to this exercise. Add the necessary number of buttons for each category. I will insert three buttons and write the title of each category. Rename each element you've added. This will help you identify them easily. As we move forward in the project, you'll add many more elements and it can be confusing to identify them. Insert a new slide, go back to slide one and select your project logo. From the insert menu, select action and select hyperlink to slide two. This logo will be visible on all the slides we create and should always return us to slide two. Copy the elements from slide one and paste them into slide two. Select all the elements again, except the logo and adjust them so that they are visible on the left side of the work area. Let's play the presentation and see how it looks. When you click the logo, it takes you to the slide two. Let's continue with the project. Go back to slide one and copy all the menu items and drag them to the left. Format the color of the new menu to a lighter color. These new items are subcategories for each of the options in the first menu. For example, I want two subcategories for the first category, which is home. I'll change the title of the buttons and remove the third one. Rename items to make them easier to identify as you continue to add more items. Select the new elements from the selection panel and move them down above the logo as shown in the video. Duplicate the new items to create the subcategories for the second category in the first menu. In this example, the second category is services and I'll add three new subcategories. I'll duplicate a new button to have a total of three. Rename the titles of each button, then copy a third set of items to add the subcategories of the third category of the main menu. In this example, the third category is products. Rename the elements from the selection panel. Again, we will do this to easily identify them. Rearrange the elements placing all of them below the first set and above the logo as it's shown in this video. Add three new slides with the shortcut Control plus M, then go back to slide two and assign an action to each category of the first menu. For example, to the home button, we will assign the action to go to slide three, to the services button, we will assign the action to go to slide four, and to the products button, we will assign the action to go to slide five. Copy the first menu items from slide two and paste them into the three new slides. Delete the unnecessary elements from each new slide. For example, here I am deleting the title and content box from each slide. We will not be using them. Go to slide one, copy the elements that make up the buttons and the bar of the first subcategory home and paste them into slide three, placing them to the right of the first category menu 
and from the selection panel, place them below all the elements of the first menu and above the logo. Repeat the procedure for the elements of the second and third subcategories, pasting them into slides four and five respectively. Go back to the slide one, select all the elements for the three subcategories and align them to the center. We will keep them in case where necessary. Let's add the morph transition to all the slides and assign a transition time of 25 milliseconds. Let's see what the menu navigation looks like. You can see that when you click on each category, the subcategory options are displayed. If you go back to another category, the corresponding subcategories are still displayed. Make any necessary adjustment to the position of the elements to confirm all of them look well placed in the presentation. Next, we need to create the last drop-down menus, one for each subcategory. In this exercise, I created two subcategories for the first category and three subcategories for the second and third categories. In total, I need to create eight more menus and the necessary buttons of each menu. Let's continue. Go back to the first slide, make a copy of a set of menu items. This new set will have one button. Change the color of the menu bar to a lighter color and format them as desired. Change the title of the button. This first menu is for the subcategory Our Story. I will name it as AR History. Duplicate the newly created set of items. This duplicate will be for the second subcategory. In this exercise, it is our crew, and I will also assign a button in this menu. I will name it Alien Crew. From the selection panel, rename the elements to easily identify them. Add two new slides below the slide three, one slide for each new menu created. Go back to the slide three and assign an action to each subcategory button. For example, to the Our Story button must link you to the slide four and the Our Crew button to the slide five. Copy all the elements from the slide three and paste them into the slide four and slide five. Again, delete all the unnecessary elements of each slide. Go back to the slide one and copy all the elements from the set of AR history and paste them into the slide four. Place them to the right of the corresponding subcategory menu and from the selection panel place all the elements above the icon, as it is shown in this video. Repeat the process with the set of elements for Alien Crew and paste them into the slide five. Go back to the slide one and align all the sets to the center. We will keep them in case we're necessary. Let's play the animation and see how it looks. As you can see, when you click each category and subcategory, it displays the corresponding menu. The next thing we have to do is repeat the process to create the third menu for each ob category, as it was shown in this portion of the video. Once you have all the menus for each subcategory, let's confirm that the transition transform is set for all slides and 25 milliseconds for the transition time. When users click on the last menu topic, we need the drop down menus to retract and show the topic content. So to do this, you'll do the following. Using this video as an example, you'll duplicate slide four, which will contain all of the menu items. Select all of the items except the icon and drag them to the left, out of the workspace. Align all of the items to the center, and once aligned, place them on the left edge of the workspace, leaving a small gap so that they're not visible when entering or leaving the workspace. Insert the title and the content of the slide. In this case, I will do it to show you how it looks when the menus hide back to the left. Let's play the presentation to see how it looks. Let's repeat the process one more time. Select slide six, duplicate it, 
Select all elements except the logo. You can center them before dragging them to the left. Insert the content and test it. Let's play the presentation again and see how it looks. Now, you can see the content for both topics. You have to repeat the process with every topic to create the content slide for each. In this project, I added some visual elements indicating the steps the user must follow to display the content. With every added element, the presentation runs slower if you share it as an editable PowerPoint file. To save it as a show presentation not editable to the end user, navigate to the menu Slideshow, then set up for Slideshow and select Browse at the kiosk. You can save a project with the extension PPSM. The users will receive a lighter version and they can navigate the presentation only when they click the buttons. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, activate the notifications and share. Find more classes here. See you next time. Bye bye.